everybody. It's Chris Hooper from On the Bus Sales Training Coaching Consulting, and we're about to start our bi-weekly sales training class. Uh, this week, we are discussing chapter four in the On the Bus Workbook on having a sales system. I think that's how I title it. And we'll start with listening to the audible recording. The plan today is just to go through the first half. And I don't know if you guys have my business card, but on the back of my card, is this simulation of a bus with 60 seats, which simulates a hour meeting. Um, so we will be using this prop. And if you guys have my card, you might wanna follow along with that. Okay, so let's start with the recording. If you want me to stop it, you let me know. Um, and we will go from there. So give me one sec. I think I'm ready. Here we go. Chapter 4. Having a sales system versus winging it. I don't know about you, but having a sales system is essential for me. It needs to be flexible and one where at least I have a roadmap as to where I am, where I am going and where I want to end up with my conversations. I find that people who wing it have far too many meetings, lunches and cups of coffee without getting the results they're hoping for. First, not everyone you meet will be a prospect or even a center of influence for you. Figure out how to weed through the chaff, which is the inedible husks and stems surrounding the tasty wheat kernel. You can avoid a lot of chaff by figuring out where to spend your time. Fine-tune skill of navigating a room by asking polite questions. This is a two-foot rule where it's okay, especially at a networking event, to say, Hey, what do you do? Remember, you never know who they know, or who they're married to, or who their neighbors are, or who can be a referral source for you, so don't be an ass. That's more for me and the high Ds out there than for you. See the chapter on personality traits. I'm going to just jump into this as it may sound easy and basic, but it's not. Here's a graphic I use to help you visualize the structure of a 60-minute meeting. Don't wing it. Use your time wisely and go somewhere exciting and profitable for your business. When we meet with someone we've been introduced to, we have a live selling opportunity, so be smart about your time. First, start with a handshake. A real handshake, a good one. If you don't know how to shake hands at this point, learn how. Make eye contact when shaking hands. The handshake started as a way of conveying trust before the trade. Share your eyes and the pulse of the moment. It all starts with the handshake and goes on until the ask at the end. First, we are really good at confirming the appointment start times and where we're meeting, but not at good at confirming the end time. Ensure that you're good for an hour, whatever you assume that the time would be, especially when meeting in someone's office where they can be easily distracted. So just to confirm the amount of time, say something like, So, are we still good for an hour? Or are we still good to meet until 11.30? Look at the 60 seats on our bus simulating a 60-minute meeting. About 10 minutes for chit-chat. Bring their guard down. Get to know them. Let them know you. Decide then if you even want them as a client. You may not. I used to have a hard time with Jets fans, and there was a reason. Typically, they have second favorite teams. Yankees, Giants, and Rangers fans, which I am, are true blue. We don't have second favorite teams. We live and die with them regardless of the season they're having. I don't want to coach people who would just bail on their companies if things got rocky. I am your burn your ship kind of entrepreneur. Those are the types I want to surround myself with, and Jets fans just didn't do it for me. But I've had the conversation enough to know that there are some passionate Jets fans out there who love their team, so I have changed my tune a bit. The first step is finding something in their office that you can discuss non-business related without one-upping them. You don't have to be a big shot here. Remember, we want them to like us. Using the bus format, start filling in the back seats, asking questions. So, are you married? Kids? How old? Where do they go to school? Identifying with them along the way. Pivot to business. Now we're leading them with questions and starting to sell with questions, not answers. 
Softball questions too, hardball or challenging questions. This is where we'll be spending the bulk of our time. Don't rush. Hit a nerve. Get some emotion going. It could look something like this. How do you know Amanda? It was nice of Amanda to introduce us. Why do you think she wanted us to meet? What do you do? What did you do before this? What does your company do? What's your next move within the company? Start turning up the heat a little on the questions. Magic wand kind of thing. If you could change anything here, what would it be? Who do you use now that does what we do? Oh, I hear they're great. What do you like about them? What don't you like? What could they do better? Is that a big enough deal to make a changeover? Could it cost you your job? What does it cost you to not deal with it? Is that a lot in your world? What do you pay the person now that you aren't pleased with? Anything else you'd like to change? My favorite questions, once you're at this point. You are the exact type of company we'd like to work with. How would someone like me go about working with a company like yours? Who would they talk to? Can you introduce me to them? Then you are CIP. So All right, we're going to we're going to stop there for today because there's a lot of information there to go over. Um, so the premise here is we've done all the work to ask for a referral and then we get the referral. So we have a real live prospect in front of us. Um, do you know what to do then? And this is where this technique comes in. Okay, everybody with me on this? Okay, all right. So we're gonna start with a greeting of some type. So we can't shake hands anymore or not like we used to. So if you're meeting live with someone, What's your greeting? How, how are you guys doing that? And let's make this interactive so you can unmute. Uh, Jeannie, when you meet live with people, and I know you are, what are you doing? I read the person. If they move forward, you know, that I'll fist bump, right? I'll do the fist bump or I'll do, uh, um, I'm frozen. Can you hear me though? Yeah, you're good, you're good, you're good. Oh, okay. I'll fist bump or, or, or I'll do the elbow. Okay. Right, depending on how they, if they don't move forward to me at all, then I'll do a, a virtual high five. Okay. Something a little more loud because I find that it needs a little more dramatic if they're not gonna do any kind of touching whatsoever. Okay. But that's me. All right. David, what do you do? Uh, generally, people, people I've met because of the fist bump, um, some actually, I mean, uh, on rare <laughs> occasions, actually extend out their hands. So it was kind of, kind of awkward. Figure out if they're going to give me, their, they're going to give you the hands, or they're just going to do the fist. <laughs> a couple of times, when I, I did the fist bump, and they did the hand. I, I, uh, I just misjudged it. <laughs> the pants. So, so pre-pandemic, I was always a bit of a germaphobe. So I was a fist bumper then. It's also a hockey thing where you you kind of fist bump, but um, now it's even more so. I, I can't remember the last time I've shaken hands. I have once in a while, but it's more of the fist bump. Or it could even be a hug, depending on the person. You know, I'm comfortable with that. But I'm thinking more virtually. So how are you greeting at the beginning of a virtual call? So you're referred to someone. Go ahead. So Jeannie, what is that that you're doing? That's a virtual clap that came up over the internet. And so I've been using it. Uh, you know, it's, it's a pleasure meeting you. Okay. And so David, how about you? What, what do you do? I just say hello. I, I don't do anything special. Okay. So I've noticed that in the beginning, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give one of these. How you doing? Hi. Good morning. But at the end, it's generally a bow of some type. But I was always a bower anyway. But I, I think there's a formality to it, right? So, and I wouldn't know I was doing that other than we see ourselves on here. So I noticed I, I've been bowing more. Um, but again, I think we need a way of starting and ending the conversation, right? So, so I use, I use the bow as a thank you. When someone okay. says something really nice about me, I just, you know, put my hands together and say, so rather than just interrupting whatever they're saying, like I just did to you. So, but a bow also could be thanking them for their time. Yes. Right. So we're yes. all being generous with our time right now. And I, I thank you for your time for the meeting or whatever it is. But we all right. need a, 
a beginning and an end. And I think the point I make in the book that where the handshake started, and I don't know if you've ever seen the pictures of the, the Japanese old traders, and they had these big puffy sleeves with a wide uh, bell bottom almost at the end. That was so you could go up each other's arm and see if there was a weapon. And you were, and you would look into their eye and that's where the handshake came from. At least that's my understanding of it. Um, so we need a place of starting, right? And then we're gonna just start with some general chit chat. And so, you know, David, it was so nice of Amanda to introduce us. Why do you think she wanted us to meet? And then you would say something and I, I, we would just start from there, right? Um, you know, they might say, I don't know. She just told me I had to meet you. And then you, you can say, well, typically I'm introduced to companies that are struggling in this area or that area. I don't know if you're one of those, but that's where I come in and help. But eventually we want to get to that place of it was so nice of Amanda to introduce us. Why do you think she wants to meet? But let's soften it up first before we get there. And we've got 10 minutes of chit chat time. So the first thing I would do is confirm the amount of time that you're meeting right? Because that's going to change the whole pattern of the bus. If it's not an hour meeting or an hour and a half meeting or whatever you assume it is, make sure they're on the same page, especially if they're in their office where they can be easily distracted, where they can, you know, if the meeting's getting dull for them, they might be like, all right, I, I got to go down the hall. You know, if they're confirmed for an hour, you've got them for an hour, right? Um, so let's establish the, the length of time. You can start with some questions like, so do you live around here? How was your commute this morning? Um, uh, did the snow affect you the other day? Did you lose power? You know, you can go weather, you can go look around the office and say, oh, you're a Giants fan, me too. Um, tough game this weekend or, or, you know, whatever it is, look for something to talk about, right? But we wanna bring their guards down. You can see if they have a picture with kids um, and ask, say, are those your kids? Yeah, how old are they? Where did they go to school? You know, mine too, or, or something like that. Find something to identify with, but don't one-up them. Don't, if they say, yeah, I'm a Giants fan, don't say, oh, I'm a season ticket holder since 1967. You know, we don't need to do that, right? We're trying to get their guard down, not their competitive juices up, okay? So, by us asking questions in the chit chat sessions, we're also establishing how the meeting is gonna flow, that we're gonna be taking the lead. And I, I think that's important, okay? So we ask the questions and then we can give our own answers to our own questions as well. And then we can ask questions and we can pivot towards business. So how long have you worked here? When did you start the company? what did you do before this? That's always a good one. And that leads them into this. David Quick, I would totally want to know who they use now in your industry. So what do you guys do now for tech support? You know, what happens if your computer broke down now? Who do you call? What, what does that look like? How long does it take? Always compliment them, you know, for having an answer and having something in place. Oh, I hear they're great. Or that's terrific. I'm glad you have that. Um, but you can also say, so what do you like about them? And that's great. What don't you like? Hmm. And that's what you want to drill down on, what they don't like, what they're not happy with. Okay. So Jeannie, you, you might have a solar situation where you could say, so I see you already have solar. So, you know, but I'm just curious, who'd you use? And they say XYZ company. I hear they're great. How did it go? What'd you like about them? You say, well, we got our solar installed. Okay. So what didn't you like? Well, my roof leaks, the roof leaks, how, how bad, how big a problem is that? You know, well, well I mean, is it just changing a bucket once in a while? No, it goes, we had to get the living room painted, the whole thing, yeah. Oh my God, that sounds awful. So what are you gonna do? Well, we're gonna have to have it reinstalled. So now you got an opportunity, right? But if we, you can't lead with these things, we gotta build up to it. Does that make sense? All right, and the purpose for asking questions is to find pain or fear. And I think fear is really future pain um, or um, projection, right? To, people tend to project negatively. So we wanna jump on that, 
right? People buy for fear, for pain, for those reasons. Mm. Okay. Um, all right. Any questions so far? Why don't we work on some questions? Let's work on chit chat. Let's work on questions. Hey, this isn't something you should need to write down or role play or, 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 or practice, but let's practice regardless. So David, let me hear you work with Jeannie and then you guys will switch. So David, you're selling Jeannie's the buyer or the prospect. Oh, okay. Go. Hi, Jeannie. Hey, David, how are you? All right, how are you? Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it was very nice of, uh, of, of uh, Chris to introduce us. Yeah, it was. Why do you think he wanted us to meet? Uh, I think it kind of had something to do with the fact that, uh, you know, sometimes I would say to him that I have a challenge with my uh, operating my computer and my systems a little bit. Uh -huh. how, do, how are you handling uh, computer uh, support now? Um, just kind of winging it. Do you have do you have somebody you work with? I have someone kind of sort of, you know, nothing really written down on uh, paper or solidified. Just I call if he's available. Great. If he's not, then, you know, I just muddle through until I get him. Yeah. How's that? How's it working out? Sometimes not so good. Sometimes I don't really care. <laughs> Who do you use? I, mean, I, I know a few people in the area. So I'm just curious. Uh, just a friend. No, nobody okay. you know, really. So he's not, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not a professional company. He's not a company. No, he's just somebody who, you know, every so often I can lean on and ask for help. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, so um, what, do you, what do you like about him? Um, that it doesn't really cost me anything. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, either, uh, where... Uh, Areas uh, where uh, he could be doing better. Uh, probably picking up my call and answering me back a little more consistently. But you know, the fact that I'm not paying anything, I really can't complain about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. How how important is it uh, that you get uh, a timely response? Uh, depending on the situation, but most times pretty important. Because mm -hmm. usually I'm in the middle of something, right? What? What potentially could be the impact if you don't get get the support you need? Um, either I can't finish what I was doing, or you know I have the possibility of losing the project if I can't get the proposal out, you know, in the timely manner that I promised. So, uh, how important is it uh, to have somebody that um, can respond uh, timely? In that issues? particular situation, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Is it enough of a problem to uh, consider making a change? It's enough of a problem that I should at least listen, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, okay. I'm kind of so stuck. <laughs> All right. So first of all, if you've got somebody saying that one of their pain points is that they might not be able to get a quote out and they wouldn't get a project, I'd be like, well, so, so what could that cost you? I, I'd quantify that. Okay. So Jeannie, what would that cost you if you couldn't get a project, a quote out? Depending on the size of the project, it cost me as little as 10,000, but as much as 50. So now David's your opportunity to maybe bracket them. Right. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that more later, but let's just hold that thought. So now you've got a pain point of between 10,000 and 50 grand uh, just being out once. So it might make sense for her to pay 275 a month or whatever you're charging, you know, to be monitored. Yeah. Um, and we'll figure out how to pose that as a question. All right. But that's as far as we are now. Okay. Okay. Um, you, you did well, I, I, and I liked your ahums, uh, you know, your, your active listening skills, but I think your answers could have been a little quicker. Not too quick, just a little quicker. 
Okay. All right. Yeah. Let, let's switch it around. All right. So Jeannie, now you're going to be talking to David. Go ahead. Hey, David. How are you doing today? Oh, doing very well. How are you, Jeannie? I'm great. I'm excited that Chris decided to uh, connect us. Uh, I'm just wondering, why do you think he wanted us to connect? Um, well, may I, uh, I mean, I told, I, uh, using, I was, uh, I had, uh, I, I need that protection, but I, this is a place I've been using for about, uh, 10 years or so. So I'm not sure if I, have, I really have the proper, uh, monitoring and coverage that I need. So he suggested I talk to you. Oh, cool. What, what have you been using? Uh, I've been using, uh, Legal Shield. Great company. They've been around for a very long time. They have a great track record. So I'm glad that you're with a great company. Do you know what they cover you for? Uh, I know that I believe that they're, they're monitoring uh, um, my my uh, like my credit cards and uh, I think I basically all my all the uh, the uh, my accounts that I have that I've credit with. So that's that's my understanding. Right. And are they monitoring your emails or? Your, your area where who's living there, any predators coming along or a lost wallet or identity, your identity make sure that no one is misusing it. Do you know any of that? I don't believe so. I think it's more, I, I think it's more, I focus more on uh, my accounts. I don't, think, mm. I don't think they're getting into my, to my wallet or any, my email or anything like that. Right, right. Well, that's great that you have some sort of coverage. I mean, it's really amazing. Uh, my question to you right now would be if, you know, if you knew that you could get more coverage than what you already have, would that be something that you'd be interested in listening to? Uh, it's a possibility. I also, I'm also get, have, I have, I currently have bundled with, uh, with legal services through their uh, legal shield as well. So I'm paying like right. one and price for all that. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. You want to make sure though that you have the coverage that you need, you know, kind of like car insurance, right? You don't want to just have liability and you need full coverage. Because yeah, then when exactly. something happens that you need the full coverage and you can't use it, that becomes a challenge, right? So yeah. with that question, with that statement being posed, if you if you needed something that they didn't cover, I mean, what could possibly happen if you lost your wallet and you weren't able to recover things for a while for you? Yeah, that would be pretty catastrophic. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I mean, what would that cost you? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, probably cost me uh, potentially thousands, maybe tens of thousands. Uh, well, for my, my credit cards I have in there, <laughs> so yeah. it could be uh, pretty catastrophic. I have always uh, trepidation uh, that I could lose my wallet, especially if I'm in a gym or somewhere. And then I think that I'm always, I'm always feeling my pocket to make sure I still have it. <laughs> but, well, you know what? That's, you know, and I feel the same way. I know that there's someone that I know that lost their wallet and what it took them, you know, to, re to regain everything. It took them so much time and energy. Uh, never mind that he couldn't get a hold of his own money to spend it, right? But the fact that he had to spend hours and hours trying to regain everything instead of just making one phone call and have them do it, which took them absolutely no time to get it done, it, it was just it was just a waste of time and money for him, which was crazy. And not to mention the stress, right? So so what are you paying now for for what you're getting? Uh, paying about thirty dollars a month for the whole package. So thirty dollars a month for the whole package. I include your legal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cheap for legal. So let me ask you a question. If you didn't use their identity portion, do you agree that $30 a month just for legal would be worth it just by itself? Yeah, I think they have it broken out uh, separately. I think I, on their website, I think you can, take and pay like about $15, $20 a month just for legal if you wanted to, if you wanted to go that out. Oh, that's perfect. So now you'll be saving about $10, $15 a month. And would you agree that putting that towards the system or towards... Uh, an ID protection that's truly protecting everything where you have absolutely no worries whatsoever would be worth your while and your time and your money. Yes, it would. Okay, great. So let's talk about how we can make that happen. Well, what do you think, Chris? Uh, I was following along and figuring out how you were going to get there. And it was interesting to watch. And I thought you're, you had the skill of a surgeon with your <laughs> question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And I think both you and I were prepared for David to be talking to you about solar. So it kind of caught you off guard a little bit and you rebounded well. Thank um, you. I'm like paying like uh, 30 or $40 a month on electric. So really that's, 
there's really nothing there. <laughs> yeah, but David, someday you might want to sell your house, right? Yeah. Would the value well, go up? You might up know if, somebody. Yeah, but it, would the value go up if um, there was solar on the roof? Uh, yeah, by 10%. So. That's a lot. That would be a way of Jeannie handling that. That's a thought. Um, yep. All right. Do you guys want to role play this for solar as well? Or are we good? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good to do it or not do it, whatever works. It doesn't matter to me. I'm good either way. All right. What do you want to do, David? Do you want to play for solar? Yeah, I'm fine with it. All right. Okay. Play ball. So, so remember, David, thank you so much. You're, hold on. Remember, you're meeting on Zoom. So you both just logged on. One of you is the host. Uh, so, David, you're the host. Jeannie's lo just logged on. Go. Hi, Gina. Hey, David. Welcome to the call. How you doing? I'm so excited to be meeting you today. Yes, likewise. Great, great, great. You know, I know that Chris introduced us and he was so excited about this meeting, but do you know why? Yeah, he suggested I, I talk to you about solar. Okay. And are you are you interested in solar? Is it something that you looked into before or is this the kind of like you're you're just venturing and searching? Uh, just venturing. Okay, perfect. Not seriously. Now, but... if, if you were to guess how much your bill was every month, what would that be? Uh, not much. I mean, I'm paying somewhere around uh, about $40, $40 or so in electric. $40 it's in not, electric? Probably, yeah, about 40 or 50 bucks. Uh, or so. That's in the summer too? Yeah. Wow. You don't use air conditioning? <laughs> yeah. I mean, probably, probably, I mean, I may get as high as 50. I mean, it's high 50 or 60. You know, this is, um, I, think I, I think the highest I've seen it was like one most probably 70. Right. Well, that's great. That's fantastic. I don't know anybody who has a bill like that. So I'm excited for you. What kind of home do you have? Yeah, but it's a, a, a three story house with a, so it, it's a basement. I got two floors. I got an attic. So is this a townhouse? No, uh, it's just a, uh, just a regular standalone standalone house. Perfect. Perfect. And the yeah. reason I'm asking is because sometimes in the townhouse you have an association that we need to go to. So I was just kind of no. fishing a little I, bit I, to I, see what it was. No, I, I, it's a standard house. I own it outright. Perfect. So if I could eliminate that $40 a month and bring it down to, because uh, you're in Jersey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bring it down to like maybe 3 to $4 a month. Would that be something that would be exciting for you? Or three, three to $4 a month? Yeah, 3 to $4 um, a month. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, would you be excited about that though? Would that be something that would say, oh, you know what? There's an extra 40 or 50 bucks a month in my pocket. Well, I can always use extra money in my pocket, but how much is it <laughs> going to cost me to do that? Well, if I tell you it's zero out of your pocket and really, is, and by the time I'm done with and showing you how to get the money from the governments and all that stuff, it actually ends up costing you nothing over the next, uh, you know, 20 years, 25 years. How would you feel about that? I'd be feel pretty good. Great. So we should work on that. You should, you know, please send me your electric bills so I can take a look at it. I can give you more pinpoint numbers rather than just guessing right now. Yeah. I, I would rather do that than just do guesstimating. Guesstimating, I find sometimes disappointing for both ends. So we don't want to disappoint either one of us. Yeah. So I'm going to give you my email address. I'll put it in the chat. You can send me your bill. And what okay. would be yeah. another good time for us to get together to talk about what I can do for you? Yeah. So what's a good day for us to get together to talk about what I can do for you? Oh, maybe in a, in a week or so. Great. Would that be on Monday or Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday would be good. Perfect. Would you like to do the morning or the afternoon? Uh, probably after, late in the afternoon would be better. Late afternoon. So let's say you need three or four, which is best for you? Uh, I'd say four. Perfect. And I am looking forward to you copying my email address that I just sent to you, sending me a copy of all pages of your uh, energy bill. And I will see you on Wednesday at three o'clock, did we say, or four? Okay. Sounds okay, good. Okay, which one did we say, three or four? Uh, four. Four. Perfect. And I'll see you at four o'clock on Wednesday to make sure that your numbers look good for you. Okay. Sounds good. Great. See you then. You have a great day. Okay. It was a pleasure chatting with you. All right. Well, yes. Likewise. Please tell Chris I said hello when you see him again. Okay. I will. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So what did you guys think? 
I thought it flowed pretty easily. I thought I was, I solidified the fact that he's not just thinking about getting solar. Now he's thinking about, is it worth it for me? Which is good. So it's giving him a little more thought. He's going forward with the process of giving me a bill. So that's 50% of the game. Once I have that bill, it's just a matter of me showing the value of it to him, which I can show it to him when I made that appointment for him at Wednesday at four o'clock. And the fact that he took the appointment shows more interest. Yeah. David, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, the fact that I, mean, I, uh, I mean, it's not a lot of money, but if I can, any little, if I can go like from uh, 40 to, 30 to $40 or $50 to, to, to like three or $4 a month, uh, have money in my pocket for other things, uh, that's without additional cost, uh, that's, that's attractive to me. Okay. And not to mention the retail of the home. Yeah, which we didn't even talk about. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we didn't talk about that because I need to show him the value of the three to four dollars first and then tell him about the resale and then tell him about the referral fee, which I didn't get into either. There's a referral yeah, fee. So, I to get there. so a couple of thoughts. First of all, Jeannie, you rushed in pretty hard and pretty fast. There was no chit chat. And the reason why we start with chit chat is for two kinds of people. One kind is people like you and I that just want to get to it. You know, that doesn't always make everyone feel real comfortable and people view us as being aggressive. So take time for chit chat more so than just, hey, it was nice of Chris to introduce us. Why do you think he wanted? Maybe, maybe we build up to that. Just say, okay. you know, hey, you know, it, it's starting to, weather's starting to change. I'm not ready for winter yet. You know, I'm not ready to say goodbye to summer. Something along those lines. Just, uh, Weather's always an easy one, right? But it's also pretty transparent that you got nothing else to talk about. Um, right. But you've got David's background there. You can say, David, look at that. Back that is so cool. How do you do that? You know, I want a background like that. You know, so that's an easy one, right? Because he's got that unique background. Um, and, and what are those things to the right? And he'll say, those are his icons. And, you know, that would be a, an, a softener and ease. But I, I felt it was a little aggressive. And if you're going to go from Staten Island to where are you, David? South Orange? And South Orange. To South Orange. I, I would ask him if there's any of his neighbors he could introduce you to. Why make the So that's something that I usually go into on the second versus in the first, because I find that people find that I'm aggressive, that I'm trying to meet their people right away versus to what is in their interest. Well, what if he invited solar? some of his neighbors to come and join in his living room? Yeah, you don't need to be at their house. You just want somebody okay. who can enter. You know, I'm just thinking out loud how to make more out of your trips. No, that's a good idea. I mean, I thought we were doing this over Zoom, though, so I didn't think that that would be something that I oh, would Oh, I thought uh, you need to see the house, though, to see the sunlight and all of that. Not me. No? My no. engineer does that, not me. Okay. My engineer goes there when he doesn't even know he's there. He goes there, he checks everything out. If he's home, great. If you know he'll ring the bell so he doesn't scare him, like who's going on his roof. And if he needs, if he's not home, he just puts the ladder on the side of the house, goes up and does what he's got to do, and leaves. It's literally for not even five minutes. Okay. All right. So no, I'm not the one that goes up on the roof. All right. So next time we're gonna take it from RCIP and on. Just to give you an idea, so RCIP is where we recap the conversation. So let me make sure we, I got this right. We confirm by asking them, we find out the importance and what kind of priority it is. And then we mm -hmm. move on to money, your onboarding process like you just did. So you haven't talked money yet. Well, yeah, I guess you did 30 to $40 to three or $4, but we can bracket each other. Uh, we described the onboarding process. So you had just mentioned, well, it's five minutes. The guy comes with a ladder, goes up on your roof. Yeah, that makes it sound easy. It's visual. That's good. You ask for their decision-making step, and then you go for a close. Okay? And then ask for the referral. So that's the full system, but we'll, we'll continue that in two weeks the next time. All right? But, but practice these things. I find that myself included, we're all getting a little sloppy. We're all, I think, rushing it a little bit and, and trying to get to it. Maybe it's Zoom fatigue. Maybe it's just we've got too much going on. But slow it down. Take your time. When you get the answer you want, like we've got the appointment for 4 o'clock next Wednesday, don't rush out the door. You know, it's you ever watch Columbo? When he, he never, the, the man never leaves. We watch Columbo here a lot. 
He, he never oh. leaves. He's always got another question. Oh. You know, and I, I've been known to call people from the parking lot and say, you know, I forgot to ask you one more question. Um, okay. But don't be afraid to, to ask all your questions and it, it gives them some comfort. Okay. Another question to ask is how do they want to be followed up with? So that's something to think about. Okay. Okay. All right. But this is the first half of the bus selling system. The rest will come in two weeks. All right. Very good. Let me just stop the recording. Oops.